So in that comfortable seated position, just resting your hands down, either onto your legs or around your baby, whatever feels the most natural position for you. And just closing your eyes for a moment. Begin to fix your attention, firstly just on your body, becoming aware of every part of your body. Just noticing how it feels. Noticing any changes that you might be experiencing, and these happen quite regularly, quite often. And then turn your attention to your breath. So this is one of the most important elements of yoga practice generally, but also really specifically with pregnancy yoga as well. So the breath is one of the main tools that you would use for labour, for the birth. So just becoming aware now of your breath. How does it feel? And there might be a lot of different elements to this. There's quite a lot of congestion that can happen in pregnancy, so nasal congestion, quite common. This is what I had a lot of when I was pregnant. Or you may be in the situation that we discussed earlier where the uterus is pushing against the diaphragm, so the diaphragm now can't move up and down to give you a full deep breath, so you might feel that your breath is a little bit restricted in that area. And then working with a specific breath technique that we call the ocean breath. So for those of you who haven't done this before, in yoga it's called Ujjayi. And this is a breathing technique where you lightly and gently restrict the muscles around your throat so that you make a soft snoring sound. Very similar to the sensation that you would make if you were sighing under your breath or the same sensation that you would make if you were cleaning your glasses or a mirror but then continuing to do that with your mouth closed. You're breathing in and out through the nose but there's this gentle restriction of the breath around your throat. And this lengthens the breath. And it also gives you greater control over your breathing. And this is one of the main techniques of yoga, but also the main helpful tool for labour, having control over your breath. So now just bringing the palms of your hands together. And as you breathe in, gently take the hands out to the sides and push away the heels of your hands as if you're pushing away two pillars. And then as you breathe out, just gathering the hands all the way back. So we're going to do that a few times. And what I'd like you to consider is that you're not just moving the hands out, you're breathing into the sides of your ribs. So you're trying to broaden the breath now. So ordinarily we think about breathing in a vertical line, like breathing up and down, lengthening up and down. And once you lose the effectiveness of your <coughs> diaphragm, we need to think about breathing horizontally. So just do a couple more and see, how, can you breathe sideways? Can you inhale into your armpits, into the sides of your ribs? And then 
next time, bring the hands together, interlace the fingers. And push the palms away, reach them all the way up over the head. And then bring the hands back behind your head, so your elbows are coming out to the sides. Now, as you breathe in, you're still using your ocean breath. As you next breathe in, see if you can lift your ribs lightly away from your pelvis. And then as you breathe out, just slide the right elbow down the wall, slide the left elbow up the wall. And then as you breathe in, come back to the center. And as you breathe out, slide the left elbow down the wall, slide the right elbow up the wall. And then as you breathe in, come back to the center. Can you do that two more times? Just follow your own rhythm. And when you've finished, you can just release the hands down. So you'll just need to come a little bit away from the wall now. You're going to need a little bit of space to be able to move the spine backwards. So once you've done that, um, keeping the hands on the legs, you're just going to start to roll your belly around. So this can also be quite nice for the ribs and for the lower back. So imagine that you're moving from your belly button, from your navel, and you're moving the navel forward, around to the other side, and then moving the navel backwards, and around to the other side. So just check that you are moving from your belly and not from your shoulders. Um, it's okay to move from your shoulders, it just puts the stretch in a different part of the body. If you want to work on the lower back, then the navel, which is aligned with your lumbar spine, needs to be the part of the body that is initiating the movement. Now, the next time the belly comes to the center, it's going to go the other way. So just start to rotate in the opposite direction. And then just easing back to the center. Okay, so from here, you're going to come over onto your hands and your knees. And in this all fours position, so again, those of you who are new today, you'll spend a lot of time on all fours because it's one of the best positions to ease out a lot of the niggles and the aches and pains in the body, but also it's the number one position for labor. So get used to your fours <coughs> position. If anybody's wrists are hurting, so Catherine, how, does it feel okay on your wrists? Um, I have got a problem in my right wrist, generally. Not, um, the back stuff is a bit weak, but it's not, it's not too bad. Okay, because quite often it can, um, what's the word? Oh, I just switched <coughs> my brain word. Um, but you understand it, don't you? Because you're all in the same, mine's menopause, yours is pregnancy. Same, same reasons, different end of the spectrum. Yeah, so quite often it manifests, yeah. <laughs> there we go, I knew it would come, as being uncomfortable coming onto all fours. So we can just elevate the wrists. So what you can do is see the edge of your mat, roll it over a couple of times. In, uh, well, I would roll it, come back, roll it, yeah, yeah. because you want to get, that's probably enough. And then just have your fingers on the floor and the uh, yeah. heel, okay. yeah, and then it's kind of reducing the angle. Is that okay? Yeah, right, so, um, bread and butter pose for the lower back, which I mentioned earlier. Um, you need to make space between your knees for your baby to fit. So just see how far apart do your knees have to be so that you can get your hips 
back onto your heels or get as close as you can. Is that okay, Alessandra? I'll get there in a minute, hang on. It's not, it's not causing okay. any discomfort? No. No, okay. Everybody okay here? Mm -hmm. So now you've got the knees in the right position, you're just going to leave them there, push into your shins and rise up. And then what you're going to do is tuck your tailbone <coughs> under and start to arch the spine to the ceiling. So you want to make as much of a rounded position in your back as you can. And then slowly start to take your hips all the way back onto your heels. And as you go all the way back onto your heels, try not to undo that tuck in the pelvis. So you want to make sure that your back still stays round. And what you'll find when you get all the way back is this feeling of decompression in the lower back. So this is what I was saying, bread and butter pose. Um, you might even want to have a few little jiggles around from side to side. So you might think, yeah, this is great, but if I just tweak myself from side to side here, I'm going to get even more out of my lower back. And then once you've done that as much as you're comfortable with, you push into the shins and rise all the way back. And then you're going to do the same again. Roll the spine to the ceiling. And then take your hips all the way back to your heels. And then maybe having that little sway from side to side with the hips. And the next time we rise up. So we're going to do that a little bit more quickly now, just working with the breath. So you're going to use that ujjayi breath, your ocean breath, exhaling round the back, tuck the tailbone under, ease the hips all the way back to the heels, and then inhaling, pushing the shins into the ground, rising. And then just continuing in that same way, exhaling, tucking, rounding, easing back. Inhaling, pushing into the shins, rising all the way back up. And just do that two more times. So if you have got any kind of compression in the lower back or any feelings of tightness in the lower back, this is going to make a difference, particularly if you do it quite regularly. And as I said, it's a bread and butter pose for anybody that is finding that their lower back is feeling a bit compressed. And then when you've finished, coming all the way up onto your hands and onto your knees. You can bring the knees back into a neutral position now. So have a look at some of these groin stretches. So this is one that, um, that may do the trick. So from that all fours position, you're going to slide the right knee forwards. And you're going to slide the left leg backwards. And you want to have as much space as you can between the two legs. And then just gently rock the right hip towards the floor and then gently rock the left hip to the floor. Now there may be a limit to how much you can get over um, and uh, depending on the position of your baby. And what you can do if that's the case is to take your right knee slightly out to the side to give yourself a little bit more room. So just rocking the hips from side to side. How's that feel? Um, yeah, feels fine. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of where the yeah. where the tightness yeah. is? And so for you, Amy, how's yeah, that? Yeah, mine's the left side. But you just got on one side, okay? Well, all the way around. Yes. Okay. And then coming back to the center, and then from here, just pushing into your hands so that the knee comes all the way back. 
tuck your toes under. Now we're going to come into down facing dog, but if that's not going to be comfortable for either your wrists or your shoulders, or if your blood pressure is high, then instead come back into some variation of your child pose instead. So you're going to come into downward facing dog, tuck the toes under, push into the heels of your hands, and let your bottom lift up to the ceiling. Now don't even think about getting your heels anywhere near the floor. Think about tilting your tailbone up to the ceiling. And then just rock one heel and then the other towards the floor. So you're lengthening into the backs of the legs. And then bringing the knees all the way down to the floor. Or if you're a child pose, rising all the way back up into the floors. Now the left knee slides forward. And the right leg slides forward. And again, you want to have as much space as possible behind these two legs. And then rocking one hip to one side, rocking the other hip to the other side. And just easing from side to side. How's that on that side? Yeah, just easing on that first side. Is it yeah. easing on? Yeah. Brilliant. I'm really stretched it at the start. Of it. Yeah, so it may be like every few days, just doing a few of these. It is quite tricky getting into the groin area, mm -hmm. just generally, but even more so in pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from here, sliding the left knee all the way back and then once again either your downward facing dog or your child pose and then again you can bring your knees all the way back down so from here we're going to come into a lunging position and we didn't really explore this so really pay attention and if it doesn't feel right then can you remember the one that we did yeah that one which stretched stretched out yeah um, in a different way so <clears throat> on all fours take the right leg back put the toes under push the heel away so this is our cramp stretch so if you're getting cramp at night you do this before you get into bed Hold it for a few breaths, push the heel away, really let that calf muscle become loose. And then just slide the hand around, knocking over water bottles and anything else <laughs> that might be in the way. And bring the foot all the way to the front of the mat. You want to aim to get the, the shin to be upright. And then you're just going to ease forwards and backwards. Now, for some of you, particularly if you've got short arms, or if your baby is in a particular position, or if you're towards the end of your pregnancy, you might find it much more comfortable to actually put your hands on a couple of blocks, um, put your hands on like one block. Um, so would anybody like a couple of blocks for this one? You're, how are you feeling? Because it can be quite tight in the, in the groin. All right so far? Okay. So then from here we're going to come into a twist. Um, so you're going to place the right hand to the inside of the right leg. You could probably uh, do the twist from just all fours actually, see, see what happens. Um, and then you turn towards the left and just take the left arm up to the ceiling. I'm wondering actually, uh, well it might be easier to stretch the left leg out, Alessandra. So it might give you a little bit more kind of, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to take the left leg here. Yeah, that's right. And then lower the hand all the way to the floor. And then Coming back onto all fours, so sliding the right knee back. 
roll the spine to the ceiling, take the hips all the way back to the heels, and just ease from side to side. And then pushing all the way back up. And then take the left leg back behind you, push the heel away. And just hold that for a few breaths, stretching the calf muscle. And then once you feel that you've lengthened into the left calf, you're going to slide the leg all the way around to the front of your space and then just hinging forwards and backwards. So this is another groin stretch. It's, it's less of a groin stretch than the one we yeah. did, but it's also another um, opportunity to stretch into that part of the body. So how does that feel? Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a good, yeah, go sort of tentatively with these moves, because um, there's a lot happening <laughs> in, in the pelvis, so it's a good idea to sort of err, err on the side of caution, particularly if you're not used to making particular moves, um, just go tentatively until you're confident that your body um, is quite happy with these moves. And then you're going to come into the rotation. So make sure that your left shin is vertical, left hand stays on the ground, turn the belly to the right, and then just gently open all the way up. And then release the hand all the way down. And then slide the leg all the way back, roll the spine to the ceiling, come and sit back into child pose. And then just come all the way up. So uh, the next one, um, we're going to come and take the legs out wide. You might want to sit on a block um, or just a bit of uh, your cushion just to tilt the pelvis forwards. And yeah. So this is one, because you were saying that you've got left lumbar, yeah. so when it's kind of over to one side, you have to do a slightly different move. When we take the hips back to the heels, that's for general lumbar, and it probably felt quite good to yeah. stretch that out. But if we, we can isolate it even more um, by going from one side to the other. So um, you can take the legs out. Now, if your hamstrings are tight, and this isn't feeling too comfortable, then I would bend the knees up because we're not really interested in what's happening in the hamstrings. We want to stretch, we're going to start stretching the left lumbar. So you can either have the knees bent or the legs straight, whatever works for you. Press the hands into the ground and then lift and elevate the ribs up and away from the pelvis. And then turn the belly towards the right. So you want to turn all the way from the lower part of the spine and then you're going to bring your hands either side of your right thigh and then as you breathe out just bow down towards your right leg and as you breathe in gently rise all the way up so breathe out bow down Continuing in the same way. And when you're bowing down, you want to try and get the pelvis to, to do a little bit of the movement. Because if you keep your, your body completely upright and you're just moving the upper body, 
you're not going to really feel this stretch in the lumbar spine. What you want to try and do is to get the lower part of your body, the bit where your baby is. So if you think, rather than bowing down, think baby to touch your right thigh. <laughs> That's the kind of the, the articulation that you're looking for. So as you breathe out, can you take your baby towards your thigh and then can you rise up? Does that make a difference for some of you? Is that a different kind of articulation? I don't have to go very far. <laughs> <laughs> So are you feeling that right? Yeah. So I've got the same thing, left lumbar, and I have to do this nearly every day to <laughs> kind of get some space into my left lumbar. So I know exactly how to fix this one. <laughs> and then come back to the center, and then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So just pressing into the hands again, find that extension, lift the chest, and then turn the belly to the left. Bring your hands either side of the left thigh. And the other instruction as well is try not to lift the right sitting bone. You wanna keep both sitting bones on the ground. As you breathe out, bow down towards the left thigh. And as you breathe in, rise up. And just do that one more time. And then come back to the center. Then bring your hands to the middle and just have a little bit of a shimmy forward. So it doesn't have to be anything special, it doesn't have to be a, a strong, um, articulate alignment. Just exploring how that feels to come forward. So we're just finding some neutral alignment here. And then come all the way up. And then gently gather up. Because we've been here a while, there, there can be a tendency for the inner ligaments to feel a little bit overstretched here. So I like to just lovingly gather my knees up with my hands. Have the feet quite wide and then lean back into your hands and drop the knees over to one side and then drop them over to the other side. And this starts to give you a little bit of a stretch in your hips. How's that feeling for you? Is that a bit uncomfortable? Okay. But in the outside of the hip? No, on the inside. Okay. Just, yeah. So maybe, yeah, 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 give it up, because <laughs> yeah. we need to protect that earlier. So any pain that you're feeling there is like a, a no-no, even though we did different things on Saturday. Um, anything that feels uncomfortable there is, is a sign that it's not the right move. So it's a good, good indicator. And then take the legs all the way out. So we're going to do a little bit of internal rotation. So I think we did this a few weeks ago. It's about looking at all the different articulations in the legs. So can you bring your right leg behind you? And just let the knees come together. So for some of you will find this quite easy. You might have sat like this. So if you sit up, no, like that. Yeah, it's to the outside. In fact, if I do, what I was going to suggest is if you can, you could do both. No, um, can do so it. like that. <laughs> so you're basically the bum's on the floor in between. Um, so then it's kind of more internal. Yeah, can, it's more of an internal <laughs> <laughs> movement. So some of you may be able to quite easily um, get both legs in this position. If you can't, then take another couple of breaths 
on the one side and swap them over so that you're eventually getting around to do the other side as well. So you might be able to do both together or you might have to do one at a time. So it's a really interesting stretch for the knee this, you know, we, we actually should do this quite regularly if we sit cross-legged a lot, it's the counter pose to sitting cross-legged. Um, it might not affect you very much, but you know, imagine my job, I spend so much of my week sitting cross-legged. Um, you know, that's not even in addition to my own kind of, you know, practice that I do at home, like meditating and things. So this is a good stretch because it works the medial cruciate ligaments. But from a pregnancy perspective, it's a lovely sacral stretch. Um, so we've, we've talked about sacrum before as being quite congested. And when you have both of the legs in this position, this internal rotation opens and stretches the sacral area. So can you, are you feeling that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's quite nice to get that stretch, which is you know, a difficult part of the body to isolate the sacrum. But if you're finding that you're getting a lot of niggling sacral pains, then this is quite a good one to work with. And then if, you're, if you've got both the knees under, um, the easiest thing is to just come up. If you've got one under, you might need to stretch them both out, swing the legs around. We're going to have a go at some squatting. So again, for some of you, it may not be um, ideal. Um, I'd probably give it a miss. Have you tried any squatting? Um, well, I was squatting up until about four weeks. Or five. Well, I was still riding a horse at that point, so I was definitely still squatting. Okay, well, we can give it a go. And if, if you get any sharp pains, then it's, it's a no. Okay. okay so it's, it's worth you know, investigation. So the key thing with squatting is not having your feet too close together. So the only contraindications are SPD, um, and um, if you've got a low-lying placenta, which I don't think anybody has, because no one's mentioned it, um, it sh it's something that should flag up. So if you've got low-lying placenta, squatting is not a good idea. So what I suggest is take your feet quite wide. And then just walk your hands back. Now you don't have to get the heels on the floor when you're squatting. You can stay on your toes. And then you can just kind of swivel around. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to go back to doing um, some of the things that we that we did on Saturday? Yeah. None of these are particularly great. <laughs> <laughs> so again, just kind of swiveling around from one side to the other and this is squatting so you don't have to you know it doesn't have to be <laughs> this um, this is a, a, a pretty good uh, squatting position again quite nice for the hips good to loosen everything up and then you can walk your hands forwards come all the way back onto all fours and then come and sit back. Um, so squatting um, is a really useful position to spend some time getting in and out of while you're pregnant, particularly if you're not used to squatting, because it's the best position for the delivery of your baby. So if you're having a natural childbirth, when it comes to the delivery phase of your baby, um, which is when the cervix has reached 10 centimetres and the all systems go, and that's kind of what we call the pushing phase because that's when you start to push your baby through the birth canal. Squatting position is bar none the best position, you know. And it's kind of come full circle, you know. Women have always squatted since the dawn of time. And you think how many women have birthed this massively overpopulated planet and, you know, most of them have squatted. And then medical men, medical men got involved and decided that they had to lie women on their backs to give birth, which is the worst position ever. Um, and if men had to push a bowling ball out of their backsides, they would not be lying down to do it. Um, so squatting, yeah. So it's quite a good idea to just play around with that and to kind of get the hips used to it. Okay, so. We are going to come up to standing and do a little bit of shoulder work. So you can kind of climb up to standing, make a space for your baby, and then just uncurl yourself and rise all the 
you might want to give yourself a little bit of a drink. I'm going to change the angle here because I've disappeared off the top of the camera. So this little sequence is going to work quite a lot onto the shoulders. Still. Too much. So you're going to start by standing at the front of your space. And we'll spend a little bit of time looking at the posture. So we did a little bit of this last week. Um, your posture is going to keep changing because your body is changing. Um, and every few weeks when your baby has a growth spurt, it's going to pull the pelvis and the lumbar spine a little bit further forwards, which can contribute to having low back aches. But there are some things as well in your own posture that can either exacerbate that pain in the lower back or help it. And the first thing is just paying attention to where the weight is in the feet. A typical um, compressed lower back often comes from the weight being in the balls of the feet. So if you stand normally, notice where is most of the weight in your feet. And if it's mostly in the balls of your feet, the chances are you're going to get a compression in the lower back. So can you bring weight back into your heels as well? And if you're, if this is something that you've done for like 20, 30 years, it's quite tricky <laughs> to try and realign your posture. Um, but you can, it's just kind of reminding yourself every day, every day. You want the weight of your body in the four corners of your feet, not just all in the balls, and also not the other way, not kind of hunching backward. You don't want all the weight in the heels either. You want equal weight front and back. Second thing to look at, are you locking your knees? Because if you lock your knees, it tips your pelvis forwards, which compresses your lower back. Can you unlock your knees? You don't have to bend them, but just don't lock them, don't jam them back. That will also help you to bring the weight back into your heels. And then once you've done that, once those two things are in place, you might find that your pelvis is in an upright position and it's not you know, tilting too far forward or too far backwards. And with the pelvis in the neutral position, and if you just lightly lift the ribs away, you should find that you've got a neutral spine and there's not too much compressing in the lower back. And this is something you'll have to keep coming back to time and time again, because every few weeks that's going to change. So it's almost like you have to keep resetting um, and recalibrating this posture because you're changing all the time. So from that position, the next time you breathe in, take the arms out to the side and reach the wall the way up over the head. And then using a breath technique called the straw breath, which is blowing the breath out between the lips, as if you have a straw, or as if you're whistling, exhale. The next time you breathe out, blow the breath out through the lips, as if you have this little straw, and let your arms come down. I'm going to do the same thing again. We're going to rise up onto a pose. So inhaling through the nose, arms over the head. And then exhaling, straw breath, slowly rise, heels come back. And as the heels come back, just notice, do you default back into a posture that wasn't, you know, how we explored it? Or are you now kind of assembling yourself um, into a more comfortable posture? Last time, breathing in. And then straw breath. Slowly down. So now you're going to take your right leg and you're going to cross it over the left leg. So this little thing is, is called the flamingo. <laughs> Um, you're going to kind of grip your thighs around each other, so you do need to bend the left leg. You keep the left leg straight and there's a bit of a gap, and what you want to do is bend the left knee so that you can really bind them together. And that'll make sense because you're going to be lifting the spine up and down, so you need to have this part of the body really strong. 
So from here, you're going to take the arms over the head, bring the palms of your hands together. So we'll go through the movements and then we'll add the breath afterwards. So you're going to fold forwards. Now, it'll be different for every one of you how far you get. As soon as your baby and your thigh make contact, then you stop bending forwards. But I'd like you to consider taking the arms all the way down towards the floor. So wherever you are with your forward bend, you want to end up with the arms vertical. And then give a little stretch of your fingertips towards the floor. So this is pulling your scapula away from each other and stretching into your shoulder blades. Now this is where you need the uh, legs to be quite soft and buoyant. You take your arms out to the sides now, push into your feet and notice how you start to lift up. Then continue lifting your ribcage until you can bring the palms all the way back up over the head. Okay, that all makes sense. Is that, okay? is that comfortable for everybody? Because if it isn't, I can modify you in some sweet way. Okay, so exhaling. Fold down. And again, when you reach the end of your rotation, just continue to stretch the fingertips to the floor. And then as you breathe in, bend the knees, Push into the ground, sweep the arms out to the sides, lift the ribs, come all the way up. And just do two more, exhaling, bow down. Inhaling, bend the knees. So rather than straightening the knees on the way up, bend them even more so that you can actually get into more of the glutes. So bend the knees a little bit more, push the feet into the ground, take the arms out to the sides and lift the ribcage. So you're working the glutes in that way. And then once you've finished, taking that right leg from where it was and stepping it back. So now having a comfortable position, the feet are hip width apart, so make sure that you've got your feet on like train tracks um, emanating from both of your feet. And then the hips, you want to have them level, so the right hip comes level with the left. Reach your arms behind you, interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades. And the next time you breathe out, just gently push the hips away. So push the hips backwards, and that will create this forward extension. As you breathe in, bend the front knee a little bit more, push into the foot more strongly, pull back on the arms, rise all the way up. Okay? Same thing again. Exhale, push the hips backwards. And just lengthen over the front leg. As you inhale, bend the front knee a little bit more so that you can push into the foot. Rise all the way up. And then just one more time. So let the hips push backwards. Feel the length in the spine. Take the arms up to wherever they're comfortable. And then breathing in, pushing into the leg. And then turning the feet wide on the mat. So you can all swivel around to face this way, so um, however that is. Turn the feet out just a little bit, coming into a gentle standing squat. So just finding the best position. Where does it feel comfortable for you? Place your right hand on top of the left and then just roll your right shoulder up and down so the hand then comes underneath. And then do the same on the other side. Roll the shoulder up and round. Slide the shoulder up and round. And then 
to check everything out. Bring the feet back into the center. And then this time, the left leg comes over the right. So we're going to bend both knees. So we've got this wrapping of them both, gripping them together. And then take the arms all the way up over the head. Breathe in here. And then as you breathe out, fold forwards. Remember to keep both knees bent. And then as soon as you lose any more movement, continue to stretch the fingertips towards the floor. And then to come up, bend the knees a little bit more. Push the feet into the ground. Sweep the arms out to the sides and lift to the top. Rising. And then same again. Exhaling. Holding forward. fingers towards the floor regardless of how far you've been able to bend forwards and then use the core muscles use the upper back muscles and the glutes to rise up and then last one we're coming down back to the center, taking the left leg and stepping it back. Again, just finding where it's comfortable for you. So you might have a short stride or you might prefer a longer one. So it's working within your comfortable limitations. Feet are hip distance apart, both hips facing forward. Interlace the fingers behind the back and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, let the hips move backwards. So push both sitting bones backwards. So you're just extending over the front of your leg. And as you breathe in, bend the left, the right knee, push into the right foot, lift the chest, and rise up. Again, as you breathe out, draw the hips backwards. Imagine you're trying to push the sitting bones into the wall behind you and then breathing in bend the front knee push the foot into the ground and rise and then two more times so pull the hips backwards as you breathe out and then bend the knee push into the foot to rise up and then one last time just keep this back heel on the floor, that might keep you a bit more anchored in curve pose. Is that not a bit more solid? Yeah. That's when you come just really tired. <laughs> time, it's time to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> and then shake everything out. Take the feet um, into a comfortable wide-legged position. Again, just finding what works for you. I quite like to let my feet move around a bit until I've found where I want to be and in that way my feet and my knees are often track the right way. So imagine you're rocking the baby and you're just going to rock the baby up to one side and you'll see the other leg straighten. You're going to bring the baby back down and you're going to rock the baby to the side. Going back to your ujjayi breath, your ocean breath. So now you're controlling the breath in your body. Walk your toes in, walk the heels in, walk your toes in, walk the heels in. That's a little bit of a shake. And then gently curling down, so easing yourself all the way back down onto the mat. And bend forward.
before coming to um, a long relaxation, we'll do a little bit of breath work while you're in your lying down position. So you might want to put something warmer on if you feel that that's going to be needed. And if you're less than 20 weeks, then lying on your back is still okay, providing it's comfortable for you. Once you get beyond the 20 weeks, um, then you need to start side lying, and that's when you need to have 120 pillows um, in your bed <laughs> to make sure that you can prop everything up um, to enable you to maintain that comfort. So coming down either onto your back or onto one of your sides, and it doesn't matter which side, so contrary to what you um, read, this idea that you have to only lie on the left side is a little bit of a, is a, little bit of a fallacy, um, because you move around so much anyway when you're sleeping. So either side is fine, because you wouldn't be there particularly for a long time. So... Spend some time easing yourself. Now, if you're lying on the side, um, you may want to have a block or a pillow under your head. If you haven't got a block or a pillow, I've got a couple of blocks, very welcome to share them. Um, you can also, if you're having any pain around the pelvis, placing a block in between your legs. So again, if you don't have anything, wave at me and I'll bring you a block. You might want to have um, something underneath your bum. So sometimes if you've got round ligament pain in the abdomen, then placing your pillow um, underneath your belly is sometimes the most comfortable place to put the pillow. you have found your comfortable position. Just beginning to gently soften down into this position. You can turn the light off. So just giving yourself a little bit of time to ease into any final positions. Noticing the side of your body that touches the ground. And see if you can surrender a little bit more of your body.
returning your awareness to your breath. Changing the breath in any way. Just allow yourself to become fully aware of the process of breathing in and the process of breathing out. So just watching the natural movement of the inhalation. Watching the natural movement of the exhalation. So see if you can maintain full attention, full awareness. Just gently guide yourself back.
just allow your awareness to rest on the thoughts in your mind. Notice any thought as it arises. And then watch as each thought disappears. Try to avoid getting tangled in the thought. Instead, take a step back and observe it as a witness to the thought rather than a participant. to navigate the fluctuations of the mind in this way, it can allow us to move into a higher state of mind where our intuitive faculties become more prevalent. The more we can quieten our mind, the more we can still the ever-moving situations of the mental landscape, the more the natural wisdom of our intuitive nature can move to the forefront. And this is really interesting from a pregnancy and also a birthing perspective. Learning to access this deeper wisdom within us. Trusting our intuition. Listening intently to our body. So just notice if anything intuitively arises now into this quiet state of mind. mind and starting to gently bring your attention back into the room, into your body. Become aware of all the sensations in your physical body. Begin to externalize your attention. Notice the sounds you can hear. starting to bring a little bit of movement into your body. You might want to wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers. You might want to stretch the body out. And in your own time, gently pushing up away from the ground. <clears throat> Slowly bringing yourself back up into comfortable seated position. I'm just taking a moment to notice 
delicious pie for you. And then just gently taking the arms up a little head. Just <coughs> up a little bit of a stretch through the sides. And bringing the hands down into the heart space. And we'll close the practice. Um, if you want to, you can uh, chant Om. There are three sounds uh, that make up the four mantra Om, and it's the A, U, M. And each of these sounds are resonating with different parts of the physical body, but also different parts of the, the psychological makeup. Um, but there's something very nice about that mmm sound uh, that kind of gives the baby a nice little massage. If you'd like to join in, take a breath. Thank you very much, Yogini Mamas. Namaste.